Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's Tips and Tricks Thursday. Alright folks, in this episode we're going to go over how to rig up for planter trolling, one of the most widely used and versatile lures throughout the world. That's right, we're going to go over how to rig up the white bucktail jig for planter trolling. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Alright folks, so like I said, we're going to go over how to rig this up for planter trolling. Typically I would say, hey, just tie it on with some fluorocarbon or mono, plop it in, troll it around, and look for the bite. That is not at all what you want to do in this case. You want to protect this lure from getting cut off by the toothy critters. Planer trolling is usually done over the deep ledge of the reef where all the fish with teeth hang out. Fish like kingfish, barracudas, even wahoo will hit this lure. All right, folks, we're not going to waste much more time. We're going to get right into the rigging up of this lure right now. All right, to do this properly, you're going to need a few items. You're going to need the bucktail jig of your selective choice. This is a white bucktail jig, three quarter ounce from the company Spro. Around 16 to 20 inches of wire leader. This particular wire leader is number four, 40 pound test from the company Malin. And a haywire twist tool if you have one and you like to use it, which I do. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a loop on the main line end that will attach to the main line of our rod and reel. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna feed your wire leader through the fixed end of your haywire twist tool. Leave about an inch hanging out. You're gonna form a loop on one end and you're going to twist and start twisting so that it forms the knot and you are essentially twisting the wires together. I usually give this about 10 to 15 twists, make sure I've formed a good knot. Then I release the haywire twist tool and you have a bunch of twists which you have effectively wound your wire leader together. Now you take your tag end, you bend it at a 90 degree angle and now we're going to do some barrel wraps. You want about six to ten barrel wraps. Nice and as tightly packed as you can get them. And as you see they start to form right here and you just keep going like I said you want about six to ten. All right, that's good. We've got enough barrel wraps. Solid haywire twist. Now what we're going to do is we're going to snap off our tag simply by bending it back and forth until it gives us a clean break. And there you have your tag. And now you can run your fingers seamlessly across it without getting snagged on the little break off point. All right, so now we have the loop that will attach to our main line. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to fasten our lure on. So you feed your wire leader through the eye of your lure. Then again, you're gonna put that through the fixed end of your haywire twist tool and you will make a loop. Be sure not to pinch this end. This is where your loop is going to connect to your lure so you don't you want to make sure it's not pinched so that it doesn't kink and break off to do that you just start making your twists again with your haywire twist tool you know good 10 to 15 twists pull it back release your haywire twist tool and now again we will bend our tag and we will simply start making barrel wraps. And as you can see here, you've got your nice little end loop attached to your lure. You can always use the lure as pressure against 
the wire leader for twisting and making your barrel wraps or you can kind of wrap the wire around itself all the same stuff again you want to do about six to eight barrel wraps nice tight wraps and we'll be good to go there we have it a nice solid haywire twist and again we will just simply snap off the tag end you're good to go that lure is up and ready to troll okay so now that we've got our lure hooked up to our wire leader to avoid the toothy critter cutoff what we're going to do is we're going to rig it up to our planer so what we have here is a 300 pound barrel swivel tied on to 80 pound braid which is our main line so to hook this up you take your planer you're going to put your main line swivel onto the ring of the planer that way it can set the planer and the planer can dive down the next thing you'll do is you'll take your leader my leader is a hundred feet of 60 pound monofilament take your planer end leader which is another 300 pound swivel barrel swivel with a coast lock and you're going to hook that swivel onto the plate of the planer so that it can pull it in. This is your tensioner and this is your lure end and once a fish hits, it pulls it like that and it allows the planer to rise up into the water column and you retrieve your fish. Then you will take the business end of your leader, which is a number seven barrel swivel and we will simply hook that on to the leader end, the initial loop that we made with our wire leader. And there you have it, you're all rigged up, ready to dip that bad boy in the water, get it all wetted up, pull it, and wait for that bite. All right, and so that is how you rig up the bucktail jig for trolling on a planer very simple setup all you're doing is you're putting a wire leader on it and you're attaching it to your reel you're ready to go you get it out you drop your lure in the water you're gonna unravel your hundred foot or so leader from your yo-yo plop that planer in the water get that planer set start boogieing around there is no need to add a trailer hook onto this and troll it with a bonita strip this lure catches everything. You will see what I'm talking about once you start trolling it around. What we're trying to get at is this lure is extremely versatile. It is not only a jig. Even though it's called a bucktail jig, it can do everything. You can most definitely troll it. You can troll it up on top and get into the bite with many species, but it is also ultra effective on the planer. Like I said before, you're going to catch fish like kingfish. You're going to catch barracuda. You might even get lucky and get a wahoo, who knows, they will hit it. And let's say you want to take it off the reef's edge and do some planer trolling out in the stream, out in some deep water. You can definitely forego the wire leader and tie it straight onto some fluorocarbon. You'll get hit by fish like tuna and mahi-mahi all day long with it on the planer down deep fishing in that water column. So if you're wondering about the speed of which you're going to troll this, you're going to want to troll it between four and seven knots. Again, we're trolling, so you're pursuing fish that are actively hunting. You don't want to give them time to come up and examine the lure and go, eh, I don't know about that. No, you want them to hit it on impulse and feed. We're not trying to entice fish to eat with live bait or the presentation and simulation of injured bait. We're trying to get them to attack a straggling bait fish that has lost its way from the pod. An easy target for any fish that is hunting. So what you have to keep in mind with speed also is that it is a smaller lure. So the faster you go, it is going to diminish the profile of this. So you don't want to do much more than six or seven knots because it will make the lure shrink and the fish might not see it and might just zoom on by them. So just bear all these tactics in mind Get this lure hooked up on a planer and you will see, you're gonna have a great time and it is ultra productive. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned how to hook up the white bucktail jig for planer trolling. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing. 
going wherever the cool wind takes us.